Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 19 in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. So we are nearing the end of the Getting Started guide right here. And we're, in this episode, we're going to take a look at the uh, section 11 on security, uh, just reviewing where we've gone so far. So we've gone through this, uh, this whole guide to this point. We started by creating uh, an application called Blog that got us to the... Um, the yay you're on rails smoke test uh, we replaced the um, the smoke test page with a uh, a root route of uh, an article's index controller that started off pretty simple hello rails taxation is theft we went in and um, then actually did the um, the model for the article we went and um, ran the migration for it. We played around some in the Rails console, created the, um, then we went through and did the seven restful routes, so show, and then we kind of did it, um, it instead of create, re read, update, destroy, we did it read, create, update, destroy. So we create, um, showed an article, then we created that article, talked, replaced our, uh, individual routes with a, a resources route for articles. We uh, created before we did the form, went and did the form, and then repeated the uh, process for update and edit. We refactored out our form into a Rails partial, uh, which allowed us to share that code between the edit view and the new view without repeating it uh, across those two views. We finally went and destroyed and deleted an article, and we had to modify it from how things appear in the guide. As right now, I'm recording this on January 1st, 2022, and uh, as of yet, the uh, the destroy here is still using the Rails uh, unobtrusive JavaScript rather than the default in Rails 7, which is what we've been using, which is Turbo and Stimulus, the Hotwire um, default that we have. For Rails 7. We then added a second model, comments. Um, we set up the associations, belongs to, and then has many in the article. We generated a controller for those comments. Uh, most of our comments appeared in the show action. In fact, all of them appear in the show action for an article. So we go in, list the comments. We then refactored out those comments into partials, co comment views into partials, and a form partial to make the, uh, the show action for comments uh, less cumbersome. You can see the, um, the version here is much uh, less verbose than what we had before and um, becomes more modular. If you wanted to um, do an edit comment page now, you could use that comments form. Or if you wanted to do a list of comments in another context, you could use that comments partial. We then kind of artificially added a status string to both the article and the comment, and then added in duplicative code to both models before using an active support concern to refactor those out and include that module in both, uh, both items. We've been doing a test-driven development approach throughout this. So between the refactoring and the last episode where we deleted comments, we went in and refactored our our tests using some uh, a test helper uh, module that we included in a couple different model tests. Our previous video, we went in, deleted comments again using deviating from the guide and using the um, uh, the data turbo confirm and data and turbo method um, items there and then making sure that we use uh, status C other in our redirects. We went in and added a system integration test for both um, destroying an article and destroying a comment because it contains a confirmed dialogue that you can't test unless you use a, uh, a, a browser driven automation software or a user acceptance test. Um, so we used the Rails system integration test to um, make sure that our JavaScript from Turbo is working as we expected it to. So that brings us here to the 
security section of the Rails guide with basic authentication. Uh, before we go into this, I'm just going to note that this is uh, this is going to be artificial, so you wouldn't want to actually go and do this in your application. You would never want to, especially in we've uh, everything we've got here is on GitHub. You don't want to put your username and password of your application in your code and then open source your code. Uh, but we're going to at least give the basics of the idea of how uh, HTTP basic authentication would work here. And then we'll talk uh, at the end as the guide does about some of the alternatives and concerns you wanna make sure that you take into account when doing something like authentication. So we'll get started here um, before we do our, um, add our basic authentication here, we're going to go in and write some modifications and failures to our tests as we've been using as our pattern here. So we're going to go into the articles controller and I'm going to modify just from DHH in secret, we're gonna do stateless and code just to, um, for the sake of, that's because I um, wanna switch it up a little bit but if we go to our articles controller test, articles controller test, there we go. And we're going to add a, uh, Um, auth headers hash here. I'll paste it in and then we'll talk about it. So we've got our auth headers here. Um, and since we're going to wind up doing this in um, both the um, the articles controller and the comments controller. We'll actually go and add this to our test helper. So we'll create a new method here. Uh, and we'll just return the value in that class. Actually, we'll just So in the event that we change this, it um, will be a little less, um, fewer places we have to go and make the change. So we'll also make this in the comments controller test. And then we're going to um, take a look at the, so in, except for index and show, we need to, um, we're going to have a, an unauthorized uh, version of this for the articles controller for our uh, new create, edit, update, and destroy actions. So um, we'll kind of add in all of those unhappy, unhappy path um, actions for that. So I'll go in and add for all of those um, unauthorized situations. I'll add in a, um, a test for each of those that asserts that the status is unauthorized. All right, so we've got a bunch of um, new sections here. So 
should not get new if unauthorized, get the new article URL, um, assert that the response is unauthorized, uh, should not post create if unauthorized, assert no difference to the article count, and then um, assert unauthorized, uh, should not get edit, similarly assert that the response is unauthorized, and then should not update, assert that the response is unauthorized, and then should not destroy, no difference in article account, and then assert response unauthorized. Now, in order to get all of these working, we also need to add our auth um, to our um, to our new article to, to our uh, our various um, endpoints that will require authorization now. So we will go in and add to those. So our so for each of these, we'll add in comma at the end here, and then our headers will be that um, auth headers. So new, we've got create, so after the params, oh, got the headers, Edit. We've got the headers. Update. We have headers. We also want headers on our unhappy path situations here. So we need to add that to create as well for our bad. Um, our bad parameter situation because otherwise it's not going to make it to the point where it's uh, giving you the errors because it'll tell you that it's unauthorized. Um, so that's unauthorized and then destroy needs the headers. Let's see where that gets us. So we'll This is likely going to break our so expected 401 got 200 we will um, go and implement our basic authentication for articles in our articles controller. So we make this stateless encode. happens here down to two failures so should update article and should display errors if update validations So we're getting access denied on both of our successful create and successful update actions there. So 
So let's see what happens when we go and try to um, create an article here. So got to sign in. to create the article and that worked so create worked we redirected to show And that worked. Maybe I just forgot to add in those authentication items in the test. So should create params and headers All right, so let's rerun that here we're still getting articles controller test 166 and 131 166 is going there, and then 131 oh, that's what I'm doing wrong is I'm nesting it incorrectly in that case. I bet I'm doing the same thing in create. Or All right, let's see if that reduces our failures. Down to one should update article. update article yep in the params so that was just a matter of me copying and pasting and putting things in the wrong place so we're working there we'll do the same thing now in our comments controller test where we've already set our auth headers and for our comments destroy here we've got the params and the headers and then test should not destroy comment if unauthorized I'll type in an adapt all right so we've got our should not destroy comment if unauthorized we go in and our article comments last we make that change we assert no difference uh, and then no header um, not headers there and assert that the response is unauthorized this will fail without our um, without our requirement of authorization. So we'll go in to our comments controller and this will be instead of of the only 
destroy. Make sure. Yep, only destroy. So we should be back to passing now for our controller tests. But our system tests are going to still be failing because we haven't gone in and changed our items there. So in both cases, when we try to destroy, we need to um, follow what we did in our see if I can do a full page refresh here. Yeah, so it sticks around. Let me see if I can modify those, those headers. But we need to look at our, we can look at our failure screenshots to see exactly what we need to fill in. So our screenshots here can look at failures, test destroying an article. Failures, test destroying a comment. And so we need to If I can get rid of that auth header, let me empty cache and hard reload. Got our quest headers. So let's take a look at our articles. No, not controller. System tests. Articles test here. We'll do fill in. straight to the articles test there. Try it again.
able to find username. Maybe it's before the confirm. See if I can figure this out. So I'm going to see if I can just do similar logic to what I did in the controller test where I pass in the auth headers. So we'll go to articles controller test. one place the other place wrong number of arguments and 12 and 38 there oh because I'm putting the parentheses in the wrong place again. That did not work. So we'll undo that. Destroy here. Maybe I can. So I've got this version in, and this is from 2021. So I'm going to try this. I'll create a private method here specify name stick with double quotes all right so try that here here. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to try it before. I 
and we got to the point of I don't know how to log in. I'm going to try it before just to see if that changes anything. still failing with inability to log in. So one more try, I'm going to try to do the accept prompt block to see if that helps anything. Pause and finish this. So we'll try that. Just do it on line eight for now. I destroy. Let's try it one more time. Look at our screenshots. All right, we're going to go in and Try to I'm going to change the the password here temporarily so that I can get the prompt again on the controller. All right, so I've got the sign in. I'm going to try one last thing here. So I'm going to see if I can, um, and for the purposes of this, usually I would put this in the test helper, but since we're nearing the end here, I'm going to go to the articles test here. And we're going to do a private def. pull in the um, uh, adapt the the changes here all right so I'm gonna try this I will go back and change my controller back here. prompt section see if that gets us anywhere invalid argument so 
line here and then try to visit me. Two seven. Article path. Or actually, I can just do keep it URL. this URL Unknown error not resolved. No, I'm still creating path in both those places, so I can't use URL. I have to use path. Let's revert to what we had before. And then this has to be path. Still not working. All right, so I've got this working um, ish. So the only w way that I was able to carry, I, I couldn't figure out a way, and this is after spending quite a bit of time trying to uh, research how to do a system uh, pop up dialog with. Capybara and Rails system integration testing. So I'm just going to concede and do it this way. So I had to let me construct with HTTP auth is the one I kept here. So this gave me the URL with the username password format there. And then uh, so I don't even need that. I can just return like that. Try it again. So that's working. This did not work. Get rid of that. And then 
we need to do the same thing here for for this. I did not wind up using the auth headers. I can get rid of those. And let's see if they're both passing now. Thirty eight. I did not find the modal. And we're not seeing a modal dialog now. Is that the case in our real? No, we are seeing. Model dialog there. All right. All right. We're going to do a Rails test all here and see everything that's broken. I imagine the show view is going to also be broken in our controller test. We've got one failure, one error. I have no idea why that modal dialog is not showing up now. So let's fix the articles controller test here. And we'll have to make a should not get show if unauthorized. I know we're changing the requirements here, but I'm just trying to get everything working reasonably. Alright, so this should get our tests except for the system test back to passing. Understand. I'm just going to comment this out, make it fail big. And then maybe changing it back will cause it to. Uh,
change it back. This video is running a bit long, so I'm going to stop here and we'll pick up in the next video. Thanks for watching this stateless code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.